Well, welcome everyone to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, Saving Taxes by Managing Your Income, part two in our series on end of the year planning with author, speaker, and nationally recognized captain insurance company expert, Wes Sirk. Welcome to the second segment, Wes. Thank you. Well, we're talking about, we just closed the first segment saying this is not about taxes so much, it's about managing your income. How hard is it for the normal American to actually sit there? Because a lot of our W-2, we're really not 1099 guys. So I don't know what we can manage, maybe our end of the year bonus or something like it, but it's kind of hard to manage our actual income per se. Correct. So most, most W-2 people, it's, it's very hard unless you have an employer, which is sympathetic to your cause. Mm-hmm. Now, some of these sympathetic causes could be, if I really don't need the income, but I still want to get paid, I just don't need the income, I could get into deferred compensation plans, packages that could forward my, my actual taxable event for years if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you recommend looking at that? I do. And a lot of employers need to be looking at that. And it's, it, there's, there's ways to keep, if you are a business owner and your key people come to you and ask for that, they're, it's very, very valuable because that's telling you, hey, they want to be here, they want to be a player, and you should really look mm-hmm. at that as, as something to extend as a benefit. And there's, there's programs where they defer it, you pay some taxes now, but you get to recoup all your taxes before mm-hmm. they get their benefit. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's a great time to do those plans. And I like your, your statement for an employer point of view, hey, this is like, this shows you that there's some good faith here by the employee, and he's going to stick around. You don't even need a gold handcuff for that. And right. if they do leave, you get your money back. Mm-hmm. Well, deferred comp is a really good idea. Uh, if you can delay your income and you can manage it, I think it's a big thing. Now, for, for a lot of people that are entrepreneurs, have small business, they're doing this maybe out of their home. It's their second job or their hobby. They're trying to get on Shark Tank. You know, There's a lot of cool things. These people can really play because we control what gets on this year's tab and what doesn't get on this year's tab. Correct. Now, and you're, you're, you deal with business people all the time, and a lot of them are just regular entrepreneurs. We're not talking about major corporations. We're talking about normal America, which writes 70% of the business ideas and income for this country. When you see that, do you sit down with your clients and say, you need to delay this because this is going to bracket bump you into a whole other bracket, and you're going to pay more money than you have to? Yeah. I mean, we do sit there and we look at the clients, but you also have to be careful with it. I mean, we have, we've been into clients' offices. I was in one last week where they had a huge stack of checks. They've been holding, because their income's been so great this year, they've been holding all of their checks since October, and they're going to deposit them on January 1st. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's getting a little risky, you know, to, to, to play mm-hmm. it that, to me, that aggressively. Um, but it's looking mm-hmm. at maybe you don't bill your clients or you say, we're going to take half now mm-hmm. and half in January. Because and, if they and, have constructive receipt of those checks sitting on their desk it, and the cons- other person who wrote the check writes it off, that could Correct. be an issue. It is an issue. It is an issue. Okay. But they don't usually think of that. Well, that, that's a, and by the way, it's a very good thing to think about. Remember, they wrote you a check. The odds are somebody's going to send you a 1099. Somebody's already going to be deducting this. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a huge issue. Exactly. Ordinary income. Now, if there's ordinary income, there's capital gain. Okay, let's talk about ordinary first. 90% of Americans understand that. they got to pay it. Okay, so ordinary income based on our brackets. We're in a marginal tax bracket, a progressive tax bracket. Of course, this is going to change if the GOP gets their way. It will be smaller, still the same philosophy, but a smaller set of brackets. I've noticed, I've noticed that the middle class, right where the next bump is, you know, you come out of a 15 and it doesn't go 10, 15, 20. It goes 10, 15, 25. There's Correct. a jump here. So for most people, we don't see this coming because we see the progression, but it's two stairs are pretty equal, and the next stair up is kind of a reach. Ten, that, to say it's only 10% more, but for, for middle class, that extra 10%, that leap up to the next step, to me, that's pretty big. It's huge. And that, I mean, getting back to the point we made before about deferred comp, I mean, we have clients that are paying their employees twenty, twenty-five, thirty, fifty thousand dollar bonuses because they've had great years. Now, when that goes through their payroll, that fifty thousand dollars, they're now mm-hmm. taking a huge chunk of that money in the form of taxes mm-hmm. versus deferring that, having the ability mm-hmm. to defer that. But yeah, it doesn't matter what the tax are going to be; it'll it'll always be progressive. The mm-hmm. more you make, the more you pay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm waiting for the flag tax, but I'll probably die waiting. So, which uh, is important to manage your income mm -hmm. because if you can keep yourself through deductions or not taking income below that next bracket, I mean, it's it's a huge savings mm -hmm. for you. So I just heard you combine two thoughts here. Take my maximum deductions legally under the code and manage my income that is not necessary to take constructive receipt of on this side of the year. I mean, that could Correct. be, the two together could be a big chunk of change here. Yeah. Okay. And then, you, I mean, another thing, kind of off topic, but you talk to your employer and say, instead of giving me a bonus every single year, I mean, we pay our employees what's called an employee appreciation award. And it's, I believe, $1,400 or $1,600 that's deductible to the business but not taxable to the employee. So why not, if you have employees and you give them a $500 bonus or $1,000 bonus or whatever it is, pay it through that versus, because then you get to deduct it and they don't have to pay taxes. Wes, I have to say, I thought I am a pretty knowledgeable guy. I have never heard of that. Is this a code issue or is yeah, this just a... It's a code. It is. So, so, yeah. so what, the, what's the phrase you used? Employee Appreciation Awards. And that, to them... Is could be free. It is free. And to you, deductible. Correct. Why wouldn't everybody be doing this? They should. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. The first time I brought up home sa our, our uh, health savings accounts, nobody heard of this, right? I'm coming now, first time. This is the first time I've heard of this. I'm going to bet serious money that I'm going to have people out there going, I've never heard of this. Russ, you're bringing new info to the show. I'm telling you, I don't think I've ever heard of this before. I love it. Deductible to the employer, tax free to the employee. Correct. Now, and what's the, the limit? Dollar, again? fourteen hundred. Still, but, I mean, it's a, it's a small amount. You're not as an employee, you're not going to get rich. Right. On that, but I'm not paying taxes. Free either. money's free money. I'm into it, and I want to take it. Now, capital gains. You know, until Obamacare came, this is pretty straight up. This is so easy, right? My client sold off his position. He calls me. This is just after Obamacare's, you know, in, inserted into the code and active operational. And he says, Steve, I just sold this off. And I said, hey, you did a pretty good run on these mutual funds. He's a guy of mine that I've known for a long time. He thought he was in the 15%. I said, no, you're probably in the 20, more than likely. So he gets his taxes done. He calls me back up. He says, here's my AGI. And it was like 240 something thousand. And I said, well, not only are you paying 20%, but there's a surcharge, an additional surcharge of 3.8 on your capital gains. Most people don't know still today, they're not paying 10, 15, 20. Some of these guys at the higher end are paying twenty three eight on an Obamacare surcharge on their capital gains. Correct. I mean, yeah, it's 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 crazy. And I noticed that if you are a FICA feud to suited deduction, if you're a good employer and you know about deducting for unemployment, Social Security, and all that, they also, if you're making enough money, they put a point nine percent surcharge over a certain amount, like it's right around two hundred forty something thousand. On top of that, just as a hospital surcharge. To help support Obamacare. And every time I bring this up, I said, hey, uh, did you get that surcharge? Show me your last stub. And they could look at it. Oh, my gosh, I got an extra charge I didn't even know yeah. about. So there is a lot it's going like, on here. It's even like a, a more progressive progressive tax system. <laughs> the more you make, they even find ways to take more of your money. I tell you what, the code is written in a very stealthful way. There's snares and traps. And that's why people like you are really helping businesses out. Because, I mean, if we didn't have the input... Because most of my accountants and CPAs are really good people on retro planning. I bring them the shoebox, they're going to do it. But I need a little planning. You said we're going to do income planning. That's what we talked about. Deduction planning, not only for this year, but also for next year. So it's, it's, I, it's I just did a, I, I had to explain a CPA didn't understand something, the recurring expense exception for, for businesses, for accrual-based taxpayers. So I wrote this whole memo, and I said, here's, here's the exception, but then... In my thing, I said, there's an exception to the exception. And then in my two pages, I said, that here's the exception to the exception to the exception. I mean, that's, to talk about the tax code, that's really, you just have to keep, it's like an onion. You just keep unpeeling those things. And then you're like, wow, this is So crazy. there's subset issues that are exclusion or maybe an exception or some kind. It's a, it sounds like a rabbinical, Talmudic way of looking at things. Yeah. I mean, it's just bizarre. <laughs> One thing before we leave this segment. I have people that have non-qualified mutual funds today and ETFs. Some have been winners. Some have been losers. I've been talking about this for 35 years. Sell your losers. Wes, how do I tax harvest and offset some of my gains on my non-qualified with some of my losers? Yeah. Sell your losers before the end of the year so you lock in that loss. And then 
because you're going to have gains on other stuff, and then you can use those losses to offset the gains, mm -hmm. wait 30 days, repurchase the ones if you, that were if you loser, want to. if you wanted right. to, but at least you should be looking at your entire investment account. And I find investment advisors are really poor at doing this, mm -hmm. you know, going back to their clients and say, hey, let's do loss harvesting, but you, you should be looking mm -hmm. at your winners and losers and sell your losers to, to lock in. I'm, your... I'm all over this idea. And again, I keep telling about, talking about this every year and everybody forgets. And then January 1, the guy says, hey, I had to lose. This is especially true in 2016, about 2015's numbers. They said, Steve, I lost money in this mutual fund. And a week later, after I got my entire annual statement, I had a 1099. How can I get taxed on a loser fund? And people talk about that all the time. Yep. Well, listen, don't forget to watch our next segment on tax deductible qualified plans, part three in our series on end of the year tax planning. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game.